Building the Future with Migrants and Refugees. Hello, my name is Brian Dwyer and I am the coordinator of the Canadian Augustinian Centre for Social Justice. With me today is Father Emeka Obiezu, who is an Augustinian uh, priest, uh, the mem uh, Order of St. Augustine, and he is the coordinator of the Augustinian Centre for um, uh, Advocacy, Justice and Peace in Nigeria. So welcome, Father. Thank you, Brian. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Well, this is the 108th uh, annual Migrants and Refugees Day uh, on September the 25th this year. And uh, Pope Francis, as the many popes in uh, previous to him, issued a document, which I, I mentioned at the beginning, called Building the Future for Migrants and Refugees. So the issue of migrants and refugees has obviously been a focus of the Catholic Church for many, many years. And down through the years, the popes have issued documents. So we'd like to talk a little bit about that today. Father Emeka is very well suited to be, discuss this with me because uh, we work together here in Toronto to establish the Canadian Augustinian Center for Social Justice. And Father went on to work in uh, New York as the official representative of the Augustinian order to the United Nations. He's now in Nigeria, as I mentioned, at the Center for Advocacy, Justice and Peace in Nigeria. So Father, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about uh, the global situation of migrants and refugees as you see it now. We have all of these uh, issues arising, Afghanistan, Ukraine, all of this is happening uh, right before our very eyes. How do you see this? Um, thank you, Brian, again. The issue of migrants and refugees uh, as they uh, affect the human society continues to um, increase by the day, coming with different dynamics, uh, both in increase in number and increase in diversity of issues associated with it. At the 2016 uh, convention of the uh, convening of the New York summit, where the United Nations brought together all the 194 member states to respond to the crisis described as global crisis of large movement of people, of migrants and refugees. We have uh, repeatedly seen the increase in number of refugees. And um, this time also have seen um, various dimensions of treatment prevailing popular narratives that are anti-migrants and refugees. But uh, underneath that also, there are some good activities coming towards a good relationship with migrants and refugees. So it is a whole lot of mix of issues, sometimes sweet, sometimes sour. But uh, as you likely said, this is at the center of a Catholic Church's response to humanity. And uh, this particular Pope, uh, Pope Francis, has taken very much interest in uh, responding to it and ensuring that we also make it as a pivotal issue of our Christian faith. Thank you. Now, I'm going to put up the, uh, the document that we're just referring to here so that uh, people can see it. So that's uh, the title is Building the Future with Migrants and Refugees. And the Pope uses a, a metaphor to describe uh, where we are and who we are as humanity. And you see, I've underlined the word journey there. So he talks about us, all of humanity being on a journey where we've come from somewhere, we're going somewhere. And in his uh, um, presentation here, we're obviously thinking about uh, the kingdom of God. And he describes the people as the builders, the construction workers building a, the city of God. And I think that has some very important uh, connection with um, the Augustinians and St. Augustine. As a matter of fact, St. Augustine wrote a book called The City of God and spoke about uh, the, um, the construction of this uh, city of God and, what, what it, uh, and some dimensions of that. Uh, Father, could you talk a little bit about uh, this book by Augustine? A very important uh, piece of work, I would say. Oh, yeah, our uh, city of God belongs to one of the very monumental works of St. Augustine that uh, brings close to us uh, his uh, engagement with the realities of our time. Um, he was using the typical experience of the fall of Rome at his time 
to uh, uh, to engage the reality of uh, human interface. So the that's our uh, event of the fall of Rome was kind of a linchpin for Augustine to uh, interact and converse on our the, the the human the human nature in relation to uh yes using the concept of journey again interfacing city of god and the, the city of the earth and city of earth is that which represents everything that is a a, a a a tendency to hate a tendency to evil why the city of god uh, uh, refers to that gift of love which we are all called to do what is very important in that city of god especially in relation to uh, the document we are discussing today is that also Augustine sees the city, sees humanity as living in three sections of cities. The first one is the family, the second one is the state, and the third one is the world. And he ensures that we have a, goal, a, a very good uh, a mix of these two, three levels of cities to experience how from each of these cities, we encounter God, and we also encounter each other. And um, for us to be able to walk well in these cities, Augustine calls every human person to walk to limit the tendencies to sin and evil, and then on uh, the other side, walk to increase the space for love, which within the context of uh, working together with migrants and refugees, we see each other as those who are making this effort to increase opportunity of God's grace while we decrease the tendencies to sin. That's very, very good. I, I, I like the connections that you made there to the uh, 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 document by the Holy Father. Uh, Pope Francis does talk about uh, we're all in this together, that uh, there's no one uh, is to be excluded, that the gates of our city should be open uh, and um, welcoming. And he mentions a few positive aspects of uh, interacting and sharing our humanity with, uh, with everyone, and especially with migrants and refugees, because uh, we have an, uh, an, uh, an opportunity to uh, meet new people, to learn a new language, to uh, understand cultural differences, uh, dress and food, and even different forms of spirituality. So it's a it's a really, um, uh, in the terms of what the Pope is talking about, a real, it's a challenge, it's difficult, but uh, it's what humanity is. And, and the idea that uh, we are to be open uh, and our space is to be open uh, to migrants and refugees is good. And he uses the term, an, uh, a refugee or a newcomer, an immigrant is not uh, somebody who is hijacking our life. He's not an invader, but rather our brother and our sister. I find that very, a very, very good uh, presentation. Yeah, yeah, that is exactly uh, what we experience in the uh, global discourse of uh, migrants and refugees. Many a times concepts of that nature are uh, very prevalent. Like I made, uh, uh, alluded to popular narrative popular narrative are often put forward to create tension among citizens and then pressure on the lawmakers to discriminate against those who are not like us or those who we think are newcomers into our society. So we use terms like invaders. We use them like uh, um, those who have come to take our jobs. You know, we those who have spoiled our way of life. So every other thing that describes the person as the other, the otherness is what makes us treat them in that way. Migrants have experienced this in different ways, and unfortunately, they still continue to experience that. Um, but the effort at uh, managing migration, both at global and local levels are geared towards limiting this tendency of people seeing migrants as the other. You know, again, going back to that concept of journey, 
at each point in time, each of us have engaged in a journey in the physical sense of it. We have come to a place where we are not citizens or a place where we are not original inhabitants, either as um, casual travelers or the other. And at each month, those moments, we expected to be treated nicely. And uh, unfortunately, what we expect from others many a times are not what we give to others. And this is where uh, this whole issue of seeing the migrants and refugees as one of us who at this particular time are going through this phase of life. And so demands every human nature and every, every human approach from us that makes them see themselves as welcomed and then have the potential to contribute to the building up of the new community that they have in, uh, uh, taken up as their own. I know that the, uh, the, the Pope also uh, encourages people to get involved uh, positively and take steps to be involved in uh, the life of newcomers and migrants and refugees. And I know that in uh, Canada, for example, uh, the, m many of the parishes and dioceses in Canada are privately sponsoring refugees. Uh, and so a parish will organize a committee, they will uh, meet together, they will raise funds, they will bring the refugee in with the approval of the government, of course, and uh, a company on a journey with that family or those people for a whole year uh, to make sure that they're well integrated into the society. And um, this has been uh, a great um, project of Canada to welcome refugees in, from the grassroots. And I think this is really what the word Catholic means. It means that we are all together and that uh, we reach out and support and help whoever, and especially newcomers. And uh, the Pope encourages um, young people, especially to be involved. And uh, I would encourage parishes and uh, other Catholic institutions to um, celebrate this day of migrants and refugees. Uh, announcements in the bulletin, a homily on migrants, uh, uh, start a refugee uh, sponsorship uh, group. There's many ways in which uh, uh, people can be made aware of this issue. Now, one of the issues that you and I are working on, maybe, and hopefully you will be able to discuss this a little bit with us, is uh, what we're calling the Maple Leaf uh, Initiative. Maple Leaf because it's Canada. <laughs> But uh, yes. the basic idea is to uh, welcome uh, migrants. Uh, so why don't you uh, explain a bit what we're doing? Yes, sir. a Maple Leaf Initiative is uh, a product of a joint invest a, 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 a initiative of uh, the Canadian Augustinia Centre for Social Justice and the Augustinia Centre for Just Advocacy, Justice and Peace in Nigeria. Uh, spinning off from this hour, a commitment to journey also with the Holy Father and the Thai Catholic community in a better treatment of migrants. And uh, in a way that we are not pitying them, but we are we journeying with them in solidarity. And in this sense, we make our efforts exploring every opportunity within our own competence and capacity to provide for them what they need. So Maple Leafs focuses on the Nigerian migrants, potential migrants to Canada and um, work to give them access to uh, facilities that are provided by Canadian society and government for effective and uh, sustainable integration. And so we start off by um, linking up with those who have received Canadian visa to come to Canada, either as student or skilled worker of, of family reunification, and then give them day-to-day -day up, up, up updates on what are the co current issues in Canada, even as things as little as the weather or each weather forecast of each day, or the little things like how you can change your money or which kind of money. And um, also, when the person arrives in Canada, we provide services on welcoming at the airport. We sent out, before this, we will send out to the potential migrants a, an arrival form to fill for us to know what special needs such person needs. We have, have somebody at the airport to work on them. 
And then uh, uh, Brian from Canada with his team would be able to provide such services. And uh, we have already gotten one of few persons who are up to that. I, I don't know, Brian, if you want to speak to the first encounter you have had already. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, uh, we were very fortunate to be able to contact the people. Well, we're unfor unfortunate we didn't contact them before they arrived. We contacted them after they arrived and it worked out very well. Um, I was able to provide uh, information around uh, food and uh, where to get some food, uh, who to contact in relation to uh, job searches and uh, things like that. And uh, they were very happy, the, fam the, the group was very happy to hear from me as a person now that they know in Canada because uh, they didn't know anybody. So uh, it, it worked out pretty well and uh, there will be follow up a little bit, but they seem to be a, a group that was very uh, well suited to go on their own. Uh, they were able to do the research. They were able to look things up on the internet. So, uh, that that's good that's good yeah i i think uh, just like you said um you know one of the um challenges of our modern time is uh, thinking that we can always do everything by ourselves replacing the human face with the uh automated faces of course um uh, the internet world helps a lot but the human face makes the difference that you can hear the uh, a true human voice just like you said it offered them a kind of a confidence that indeed uh, they know somebody. And right. you never know what happens down the line. Um, when issues come up, even to celebrate, they will add, particularly know that there's somebody there that is human that they can run to or touch. You know, again, I situate it within the entire project, Canada, the Catholic project of journeying with the migrants and refugees. Yes. This is a very practical human way of saying we are in solidarity with you. We are uh, advancing for your sustainable integration. You are not alone. We are here. That is yes. the concept. We are here with you. Right. And uh, I think um, to support that initiative of this kind will be very laudable. So uh, we are still exploring partnership with government, with agencies, with individuals who think that this kind of initiative uh, uh, is very important to put a face and a smile on somebody who is coming to a new place without knowing anybody. Right. And so we, we will be able to provide ways if you go to follow us on our uh, social media, our Instagram, uh, our Facebook, or contact the Canadian Center for Augustinian Center for Social Justice through Brian, or contact the Akaja from Nigeria through our contact. We'll be able to let you know how you can support this initiative. And maybe we'll be happy that that will be our own Augustinian way of uh, joining with the, the, the Holy Father in this uh, laudable project of making migrants and refugees feel one like us which they are. Very well said, thank you, thank you. I want to go back to um, uh, the um, the document here. Uh, and uh, just in closing, I think it would be good for us to uh, look at this prayer that, uh, uh, that uh, the Pope has put there. And I like very much the very ending where he says, and I think we all could uh, pray this, Lord, let us learn how beautiful it is to live together, live together as, brothers as brothers and sisters. And sisters. Amen. Amen. So thanks again, Father, very much for uh, your time today. We really do appreciate it. I'm going to put up this uh, closing slide here that gives people uh, some contact information. If you want to see the Pope's message, it's there. Uh, the Migrants and Refugees section uh, from the Vatican is there with a lot of information and posters and ideas for uh, 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 workshops, etc., and then the Augustinian Center here in Canada. So thanks again, Father. We really appreciate what you've uh, done for us. Thanks very much. Thank you, Brian. It's always a pleasure to be with you and keep up with the good work. Thank you. Yeah,